Thanks for joining the show today. My guest is, has become a friend since the last time you saw him on the show. He was here promoting his documentary about Sylvester Stallone and we became fast friends for obvious reasons, but also outside of that, just have so much respect for Derek Johnson's work. And um, yes, definitely become a friend over the months. Thanks for being coming back. I, I asked you back then if you'd come back when your new uh, documentary came out and here you are. So thanks for being on the show again. Well, thanks for having me and thanks for the friendship. It's yeah, I had I hoped when we finished that interview when you came on to talk about 40 years of Rocky that we'd become friends because I felt like automatically we had so much in common and then we've stayed in touch all of this time and it's been fun to watch you promote that and this, the documentary had great success. Tell us a little bit about the success of, of 40 years of Rocky. Oh, wow. I mean, just off the top of my head, it was number one in the UK, um, number one in a few other countries, I can't remember. And I think we were number 10 in the US. So it was, uh, it was pretty successful. I think a lot of people dug it. And then it was kind of weird, you know, just what, six months later or so, we released a new one. So yeah, it's been a pretty cool year, I guess, other than, you know, the obvious the pandemic. Obvious. Yeah, the, your new one is called Stallone, Frank that is, and it's about Frank Stallone, Sylvester Stallone's brother, and we're gonna get into that. Uh, but also I wanted to just, uh, well, also you sent me a poster from the 40 Years of Rocky film and for my son for Christmas, so thank you for that. Signed and everything to go along with another Rocky poster he has on his ceiling in his bedroom. I'm that mom that's not gonna change his room at all. Um, he's going to come visit with his children for the next however many 50 years and that room is going to stay the same. So that poster will be up for the rest of my life. So um, well, thanks for sending, it. <laughs> thank you for sending me your book. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you thanks for reading it. it. Uh, so let's talk a bit before we get into the film. I wanted to share more as I've gotten to know you the last few months since you were on the show before just a little bit about you as a person who's developed into this very successful filmmaker. If you want to take a deeper dive into becoming a filmmaker, what did you love about it as a kid? What did you love about movies? What stood out for you? And then what about that helped you keep plugging away when there's so much rejection and so much difficulty in the process of becoming a filmmaker, especially in Hollywood? Uh, as a kid, yeah, I just, I always wanted to make movies. I mean, since I was three, I believe. And a lot of that had to do with John Avildsen's films. I grew up watching the Karate Kid movies, Rocky, etc. But also I grew up on a lake and I just had like this whole realm of imagination to play with. And, and storytelling in the South is like just a part of life. You know, your, your uncle tells a story, your grandmother, whatever. So I always had an affinity for storytelling. Actually, when I was 13, I started writing a book, which I recently found in storage, by the way. So I'm gonna crack that open one day and see what I was thinking at 13. But um, really what it translated to is I wanted to make films, I wanted to direct. And, um, you know, I went to, in, in high school, I started making short films. And then I went to film school and it just kind of never left me, you know, those, early childhood uh, inspirations. So, you know, getting into Hollywood, it was quite easy. And what I mean by that is I didn't go to Hollywood right after film school. I went to Shreveport, Louisiana, where there, were, there was a lot of filmmaking going on. Hollywood was there for about 10 years. You know, now they're all in Atlanta, but it's all about tax incentives. They were there and Shreveport was only an hour away. So from film school, I spent, you know, my early to mid or early, mid, late twenties in Shreveport making movies and working on Hollywood sets. I didn't move to Hollywood till I was 30. So that's why it was kind of easy because I made all these mistakes early on. Before you got there. And so what you've done feature films and documentaries. Do you have a preference? Feature films. And without what a doubt. feature films do you like more or enjoy more than documentaries? Well, that was my first love. Documentaries came about kind of by accident. I enjoy documentaries, but I love narrative film because I, I just love spending two hours or an hour and a half with the audience from start to finish telling a complete story as opposed to 
you know, a TV series that can keep going on and on and on, which is great. Some of the best writing out there. But for me, I like to start, get in there, get finished. A documentary is great. And I've enjoyed my experience with it. But, you know, you, you don't write the script with a documentary. You write an outline. The interviewees kind of write the script for you. And then you put it together. Whereas a narrative feature, it's scripted, and then you shoot it, and then you edit it, and then you're done. So it's a lot different than a documentary. Um, but I enjoy both. We talked when you were on before about how you had an outline for 40 Years of Rocky when you sat down with Sylvester Stallone. And he pretty much said everything you had planned in the outline. So what about this film in particular, Stallone, Frank, that is about Frank Stallone, do you feel like your outline, do you discover something new or ch does it change shape as you start to talk with people? Because you have an outline, you have an idea, but you don't necessarily know what they're gonna say. So does that change the story or how you tell it? Yeah, you, you, you go in there knowing what type of film you wanna make. And then with Frank, he's just, he's so easy to edit because, and, and to interview because he just has this memory. So he can start from birth all the way till now and kind of each time you interview him, he'll remember where he left off and then he'll just pick up from there. It's quite impressive actually. So he made it easy in that sense. Um, but yeah, you discover a lot. Like I go in there with, with topics of discussion is what we call it. Uh, I've got about maybe 10 tailor made questions. And they could be, they could even be broad, but you go in there and that's kind of like your outline. And then they just kind of go and, and, and you kind of direct them and you, 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 you harvest what you, what you want and what you need. And then, you know, and some people you'll interview for maybe the interview takes an hour, two hours, but unfortunately you only get one line out of it. Okay. So it, it just, uh, it just depends. It's uh, when you talk about easy to interview and easy to edit, when, when we travel for the Don't Wait Project tours, you know, and it's the same thing, coming back with all this footage and you think you know this, I think I know the story I was gonna tell in that city about that person, but maybe they, even the way they talk, you can't cut where you need to cut because they went right into the next set. People don't realize, so when I watch you, when I watch your film, I can, I know the, I know some of the work behind it. I'm not near the, the filmmaker that you are, but just in terms of having to edit people's conversation and them understanding that that, uh, in between the line they just said makes it almost impossible to not use both, if that makes sense. Right, and, and you know, a trick to that is I use a lot of, I call it goop. It's just what I've, I've been calling for years is, goop to me is photos, yeah. footage, it's the filler, it's the things that help tell the story. So uh, a lot of that stuff you can cut out or cut around and, uh, and, and to piece it together seamlessly and, um, you know, one critic recently said I had too much of that. And I remember thinking, how can you have too much of, of visual storytelling in a visual medium? I thought that was pretty stupid. But <laughs> it, it, it's, you know, that's their opinion. Um, but, you know, yeah, you can kind of cut around that stuff. I remember the late, great John Avildsen, when I did the documentary on him, King of the Underdogs, uh, he, he said a lot of, uh, 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 and I remember like directing him to not do that, but he still did it. It was just natural for him. So when you watch that film, it is just so like, I cut out hundreds of, uh, um, and sometimes that Frank, hangs on their last Frank word. Frank does do that. Sometimes it hangs on their last word. It's impossible to to cut it out. And and then the more you direct them, the right. more you're conscious of it. So then they get, you know, so it becomes like this whole other thing sometimes. But um, no, I right. thought the pacing of the film that you did with, with Frank Stallone was, I was entertained the entire time. So I mean, I wasn't like thinking, okay, I'm kind of bored with Frank Stallone. I never felt that way. And, and of course, in 40 Years of Rocky, that was a 30 minute documentary of just the most incredible footage. It's impossible if you're a Rocky fan, even if you're not, to get to get bored with that. That's our attention span though, right? To set out to do an hour and a half film and hold people's attention, that's the goal, I'd imagine, part of the goal. 
Well, it's funny you mentioned the pacing. Again, I, I don't care what critics say. I, I, I welcome it because criticism makes you better. But sometimes I'm just – I'm just taking it back. One critic said about Stallone Frank that is that it was too fast paced. And I'm like, don't you really, doesn't this person realize that's the point? I'm keeping up with the speed at how fast Frank talks and tells stories. Yes. You know, I can't just stop and show a shot of a tree with the sunlight in the background, you know, like that. Why that's do that? Right. He's he, that, that goes against everything that Frank is. So again, I thought that was funny. But, you know, talking about pacing in documentaries, that is something that I'm very conscious, conscious of when I make a film. I don't care to have filler of the tree and the sunlight and like a little dewdrop. That's why I have that in a documentary. I, it blows my mind. Mm -hmm. So every time I do a documentary, I just get in there and I hit you over the head with all of this information. That's just my style and my preference. Uh, obviously, 40 Years Rocky was a little different in the sense that, yes, it was 30 minutes, but I think the pace was slower because, you know, the way that Sly narrates, it, it was paced to his narration. So it kinda, you kind of go with your subject as well on how fast you're going to go. Makes complete sense. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk more with Derek Johnson. He's the director of the new film, Stallone, Frank, that is. We'll show you the trailer when we come back from break. I know exactly the day I opened my mouth to sing. It was a Sunday, all the relatives over the house. It's an old Italian song. And I didn't know what the hell the words were. I was like six, seven years old. It was, it come it. All of a sudden, I just start singing along with it. It just seemed natural. For some reason, it was effortless for me. I never had a pitch problem. I could just sing. Please welcome Frank Stallone. 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 In his world and his talent. He's, you know, every bit as good as I am at what I try to do. He's a five-tool guy. He can sing, he can act, he can perform, he can write, and he can fight like a son of a bitch. He was always kind of performing. He had this kind of theatrical thing. Frank was always kind of on. He sings his ass off. Always did. Frank has style and Frank has endurance. He likes to talk a lot. <laughs> he can talk. He's a force. He's the real deal. Everybody knows, yeah, he did a little doo-wop thing in the first Rocky film, but they think, oh, that's cute. You know, Sylvester had his brother sing a little thing at the beginning. And then you dig deeper and you find out, wow, this guy's a tremendous musical artist in his own right. It was something I was born to do. And I was able for once in my life to be able to show people what I could do. This is the chance of a lifetime. He was into music 24 hours a day and knew that was his calling. He never quit. I don't think the public took him serious. People are going to be thinking of Sylvester Stallone. You just think of him as soon as you see Frank. It's not easy because you live in the shadow, and every time you get a great job, you know, people say, you probably got that because of your brother. He didn't. He got this because of his talent. He's gone through hell. I mean, they would put signs up appearing tonight, Rocky's brother. Rocky's brother. Oh, man, come on. I felt like a complete and absolute failure. Frank, I'm sure, knew what he was getting himself into. He just loved to play. It's like that beat I gave you last night must have rattled your bell, huh? I always wonder what has kept me in this game. But, you know, I just keep coming back to I love it. That's the trailer to Derek Johnson's new documentary, Stallone, Frank, that is. It's about Frank Stallone, Sylvester Stallone's brother. I told you, uh, Derek, that I watched the film yesterday and really loved it. We talked about the pacing earlier in the show. Um, what was your favorite part about doing this documentary with Frank? And just now that you've seen the film and people are starting to see it and give their feedback, what's, what was your favorite part about filming it? Wow. Um, I don't know, probably just all of the traveling that we did to interview these really interesting people. I mean, we went California, Florida, New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, Maryland. Like, I'm, I know I'm leaving 
maybe one or two states out, but we went everywhere. And that was really fun. Um, so I really enjoyed that was, was shooting this, this film. It was, uh, it was pretty, pretty cool. How many of the clips that we saw of the interviews did you do and how much of it did you have to get from other footage? It sounds like you were able to travel and interview a lot of the people that we, that we saw, but was, there, was, was most of that yours? Yeah, all of the interviews uh, I did and with my producing partner, Chris May. And uh, yeah, we shot all of that footage. Um, and as far as the, the goop, as I mentioned earlier, the photos and the footage that we, you know, we uh, like uh, the, sorry, I lost my train of thought. The photos and, you know, the, the archive footage, stuff like that, we gathered, which was really fun. I remember we spent two whole days at Frank's house just scanning in images. He has a whole archive of family photos and whatnot. So that was, that was pretty cool. That was a fun couple of days. I enjoyed seeing those. I mean, it makes the film so much more interesting, right? To have those, have that history from, from childhood all the way through. I learned about Frank Stallone. What I didn't realize is how much of the music he was involved in, especially uh, I knew a, a bit from about the Rocky films, but staying alive, um, I didn't realize uh, how involved he was. I don't know how, um, but I, you know, what did you learn about Frank that you maybe didn't know coming into the film? Well, yeah, certainly staying alive. I had never seen it. And uh, so I didn't know he did any of that stuff. And I was just sitting there every time he would tell a story. Obviously, I did my research, but I just, gosh, I learned just pretty much that whole like era of the early eighties. I didn't know that about him. You know, I knew he did Rambo too, cause I watched these movies, but in Rocky, of course, that whole like pop star era he had, I had no clue. I didn't know he had a number one hit song. So that was really cool to experience and kind of learn about. It was just bizarre and pretty cool. Yeah, I had seen for sure, um... Saturday Night Fever and Staying Alive, but I was young. I mean, we've talked about this. I'm, I'll be 50 this year. So I, I saw those at a reasonable age that I remember the films, but I wasn't paying attention. It's kind of like when I saw the first Rocky, I didn't really begin to understand Sylvester Stallone's hand in it until maybe the second movie when they were talking about the success of the first one. And there wasn't as much information. You didn't have access to all of that like you do now can't just Google Sylvester Stallone staying alive and then find out about his brother being involved in all of that back in those years. Um, I was really entertained by it. I had, I had no idea. When you set out to uh, tell Frank's story, um, you know, you had a lot of, you had Sylvester Stallone in the documentary, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So some of the people from what we understand as Sylvester Stallone's circle is also part of Frank's circle. So they've been really tight brothers for a very long time. Sylvester Stallone said at one point, if there's a plane going down and there's only one parachute, you know, I'm giving it to my brother. So did you get to see that, the bond that they share, the animosity that he never seemed to blame Sylvester for, but like this, that was created in the media, this competition. And did you, were you witness to that, the, the fun way they kind of jabbed at each other? Oh, absolutely. I mean, they're, their brotherly rivalry is, is pretty hilarious. But you said that, that Sly, see, you interpreted it that Sly would give, the, give it to his brother, the parachute. Is, is he saying he'd take it? I'm thinking that he means Frank's going to take it. But, I mean, that's it's oh. open for interpretation. Yeah. Um, so that's funny that you it. saw it that way. I saw it another way. And yeah, who knows he how he say, meant. I'm not getting it. I thought that meant yeah. he'd give it to his brother. <laughs> that's funny. No. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. But, no, they're, they're, they're like this. They're like two rams sometimes just butting heads but and you know obviously if you stick around in the end credits you get to see them kind of jabbing each other uh yeah it's fun to witness i mean it's they're fun to be around and they certainly have not let up on that rivalry but you see in the movie that they really do care about one another and and uh their their mother who just recently passed you know she talks about that in the film that they can't live without one another so very very fun to watch yeah, she was fun to watch too. 98 years old she lived. That's a good run. It's a really good yeah, run. Yeah, she had the mentality of a 48-year-old. I mean, she was a really interesting lady. 
Well, let's take a break and we come back. We'll talk about what you're up to next. I know you've got some limits with COVID like we all do, but let's talk about what's next for you. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend it. There's lots of places you can find it. It's called Stallone, Frank that is. It's about Frank Stallone, who is Sylvester Stallone's brother, and it's made by who we're talking to now, Derek Johnson. We'll be back in just a moment. Wrapping up here with you, Derek, thanks again for being here. We're talking about your latest film, Stallone, Frank that is. I watched it yesterday, thoroughly enjoyed it, highly recommend it. Asking you what is next for you, of course, with the restrictions in mind, but what are your plans for your next film? Well, we have a couple of documentaries lined up. Again, they're pushed because of COVID. We have features lined up, they're pushed. So we, we know what we're doing next. We just can't do it yet. And uh, so 2021, I feel we're going to be on set again. When, I just don't know. But hopefully sooner than later. Well, I, I look forward to it. And I, again, thank you for um, letting me glean some of um, your life as a filmmaker and just becoming your friend and kind of seeing how this works behind the scenes as you prepare and and promote. And you just really... You're one of those, I've taken a break from social media and you're one of those people on social media who is there for all the right reasons. Just like a nice picture of your day or uh, the work you're doing or promoting the work you're doing or promoting someone else's work. And I just think that's a nice place to be right now instead of some of the other stuff that's happening around there. Um, I don't know if that's your goal, but that's how it comes across. Well, I appreciate that. I, I'm not in it for the politics or the political posts or, you know, whatever. I'm like, hey, post a picture of your cat or your kid. That's cool. But it's like, for me, like this whole climate we're in, it's like, I'm not going to do that. So I just post about movies, like you said, like what I'm up to. Um, you know, it, I just kind of keep it at that because anything else you post is just going to get, you know, creamed on. So I'm just like, eh. Whatever. <laughs> this is what I'm up to, guys. I hope you enjoy it. So, what are you up to? So, on. what's a typical day now that you're now that you're wrapping up? We have one more minute. Like, what's a typical day right now? Are you editing anything else? Are you working on? Yes, I'm actually editing a secret project right now that I can't talk about. Um, and I write, and I just get prepared for the next one. But I've been working on a project since September, um, just editing every day. It's uh, kind of mind numbing, but. Hey, you know, it's what I do, so. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing what you do. I appreciate it. If you haven't seen the film, Stallone, Frank, that is, I highly recommend it. Fully entertaining. And also 40 Years of Rocky. Um, like I said, I have the poster. We have the poster at our house. And there's all kinds of fun uh, memorabilia that you, can, that you can order online. So where do people find it? Uh, they can find it on Amazon, iTunes, YouTube. Actually, you can go to StalloneMovie.com. And you can watch it there. There's some memorabilia or, uh, you know, there's some merch rather that you can buy. So, um, and just, I want to say a special shout out to all my team. I mean, we, we're, we've been on this film for a very long time. So without them, it wouldn't happen. And thank you again for having me on your show. I love coming on and congrats to you on everything that you're doing. Yeah. Thank you so and much. Enjoy your hike. Yeah, I know. It's been kind of nice, but uh, we'll, I'll see you again. I'll see you again. Absolutely. Take care. Do you want to become part of the most dependable brand of vehicles today? Then start looking at Town Toyota. Come drive the best-selling, totally redesigned 2019 RAV4. Come check out the powerful towing performance of the Tundra. It's built for the worksite and the weekend. Forge your own path and seek tougher roads in the Tacoma. Leave no trail left unchallenged. Whatever your vehicle needs, Toyota has a seat for you. Come visit us today.